Hey folks, I'm Chris and I'm your Commander Mechanic. I wanted to start off today's video with a little history of me. When I learned to play Magic, I hated blue. Turns out most people are the same. Apart from a few exceptions like Mana Tithe or Withering Boon, blue is the only color that can counterspell, and the most frustrating thing in many players' minds is having someone say no to your spell. That's where the permission archetype gets its name. An opponent gets to decide whether you successfully cast your spells or not. They get to say yes or no to you otherwise playing the game. That's where control archetypes are born. The color blue. It's a unique effect that I always felt was unfair. Not unfair in the sense of the game, but unfair that blue was the only color that gets to do it. For the longest time, I avoided mono blue decks in Commander, too. With the entire history of magic at your fingertips, there are just too many good tricks that make it boring. Force of Will, Cyclonic Rift, Fierce Guardianship, yawn! Give me something different. And lately, we started to get that. One of my favorite decks in the past year, Orvar the Allform, is a mono blue deck. But still, there's a handful of slots in any blue deck that are dedicated to counter spells. Why not? It's the colors bread and butter, like green with ramp. One doesn't come without the other. Now flash ahead to the Midnight Hunt pre-release, and I open the new mono blue mythic legendary Lear, Disciple of the Drowned, in his fancy alternate art. Immediately I suppress the urge to yawn until I read the full details. Let's take a look. Lear, Disciple of the Drowned, is a 5-mana 3-4 human wizard that says spells can't be countered. Additionally, each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard has flashback, with a flashback cost equal to its mana cost. Seems pretty simple, but what? Wait, does this mono blue legendary prevent anyone from countering anything? That's certainly one way to balance a card that could potentially let you double up on every counter spell. And seeing that, I immediately saw a challenge. Now it isn't boring that blue could counter spells because they can't with Leer in play. Now this is a hoop that I want to jump through. How do I play a control deck when I can't counter spells? And how can I counter spells without technically countering spells? How do I get past that fine print? Now you've got me hooked. Now you're daring me to build a mono blue control deck, something I have for a long time thought boring and unfun, in a way that's completely atypical and breaks the mold. So folks, how do we break Leer? Let's start with the nuts and bolts. Leer wants us to be a blue spell-based deck since we can get twice as much value from each of our instants and sorceries, so we will want a high volume of each of them. Like any control deck, we'll want to be able to act at instant speed most times, so we'll prioritize instant spells. We'll be what some people call a draw-go deck, where we draw a card, play a land, and pass the turn. This means we'll include very few permanents aside from mana rocks, or pieces that synergize with our game plan. For instance, Secret of the Dead turns everything we cast from our graveyard with flashback into a cantrip, keeping our hands full in cases where we aren't losing any cards from our hand. And if we draw too many cards? Well, there's no such thing. But discarding to hand size doesn't lose us access to those spells, since we can flash them back. Creatures like Archmage Emeritus work the same way for us. Everything we cast, in this case from our hand or graveyard, gives us access to more cards. When playing Control, one of the biggest issues is running out of resources when you need to manage three players, but drawing on each cast takes care of that for us. Wavebreak Hippocamp is another great draw option too. If we're playing the deck at instant speed, being very reactionary, then we could be drawing at least one card on each of our opponent's turns. Full hand, full options. Sapphire Medallion will be an all-star as we are in mono blue, and it will typically net us a discount on everything we cast from our hands or from our graveyards. And Catalyst Stone is maybe one of our best mana rocks in the deck, dedicated to flashing back spells. A two mana discount on all of our flashback spells is amazing, and reduces just about everything we cast to only one or two mana if we curve our decks right. So quick and easy. We have our mana and card draw taken care of, now what are we actually using to control the board? How are we playing permission when our commander shuts off counterspells? The answer here is simple. 
Let's go modal. By using counter spells that have multiple modes, like Archmage's Charm, Mystic Confluence, or Insidious Will, we can counter spells when Lear isn't stopping us. And once Lear comes out, these aren't dead spells in our graveyard like a plain old counter spell would be. These spells are called modal because you can choose the modes when you cast them. Another famous example being Cryptic Command. Let's take a look. When you cast this spell, choose two. Counter target spell. Return target permanent to its owner's hand, tap all creatures your opponents control, or draw a card. So before Leer is out, we could use Cryptic Command to counter a spell and draw a card, for instance. And once Leer is in play, we can use Cryptic Command to bounce a smothering tide before a player casts a Wheel of Fortune, while also tapping down all creatures and fogging combat. The ability to choose what you want to do with a spell is everything here, and the flexibility is key. We're a control deck that's only going to be able to counter spells when our commander isn't around. So what are we looking to do when our commander is around? We can still control spells on the stack, that's important. There are several spells that can be pseudo counter spells while we get around Lear's static ability. Commit of Commit to Memory will tuck a spell. This doesn't counter it, but does remove it from the stack, meaning it doesn't resolve. Countering a spell without actually countering it. Narset's Reversal will bounce a spell to an opponent's hand while giving you a copy of it. This can net you some amazing value while giving your opponent a chance to recast the spell later. This can be really beneficial if they've used any additional resources to cast the spell, like sacrificing a creature or land, or using treasures to cast. Airtie's Meddling, an older spell, exiles an opponent's spell from the stack with delay counters on it. This is the proto-delay counter spell, accomplishing the same thing but without actually saying counter target spell. Unsubstantiate functions this way too, returning a spell from the stack to an opponent's hand. This is also modal, giving us the option to bounce a creature too, so it's really beneficial to us whenever we need it. Summary Dismissal is another way to counter spells without countering them, and that's to exile all of them from the stack. This is a great option if there's an extensive stack war, or if someone has held priority to cast a spell in response to their own spell, and can be used to counter abilities too. The more flexible a spell is, the more use it is for us, for all points in the game, when we have access to it in our hands, or when we have access to it in our graveyards. There's also another set of cards that can help us control spells on the stack without countering them, and that's by ending the turn. Time Stop and Discontinuity are two spells that can just stop. By ending the turn, it removes all spells that are currently on the stack, functionally acting like some of our previous entries, but also acting as a combat fog, or being used in an opponent's upkeep to stop them from even drawing for turn. The added benefit is that they don't exile themselves like most extra turn spells do, meaning we could be ending multiple turns in a single game thanks to Leer flashing them back. So with our control package taken care of, countering spells without countering, what else are we flashing back? Blue has very efficient creature removal that we could be flashing back here, like Pongify, Rapid Hybridization, and Suspend. Since we can flash them back, it means we can have an ever-present threat of removal at the ready. Small cantrips are fantastic to flash back too. Instants like Brainstorm or Opt at minimum replace themselves, but when cast from the graveyard, net us additional resources. Even the sorcery speed cantrips of Ponder and Preordain are excellent, efficient uses of our mana, and just serve to keep our hands full as the game goes on. We are all about recycling spells here. Then we have large scale removal available to us, like Flood of Tears for instance. It can bounce all non-land permanents and allow us to put Leer back into play if he's out. We can reuse that a second time if we're being threatened with big board states. We can also be flashing back protection for Leer and ourselves with options like You See a Guard Approach or Lazatep Plating. We may not be able to counter spells, but we can ensure they don't resolve by not having legal targets. If someone tries to remove our commander, all it takes is flashing back one of these, and we're safe, and so is Lear. And a very interesting interaction that's worth noting. We can flashback spell creatures with Lear. What do I mean? Well, Brazen Borrower can be cast as Petty Theft, bouncing a permanent, which we can also do from the graveyard. 
Since we can cast Brazen Boro from Exile, we could essentially be putting it back into play and bouncing permanents over and over again as long as the Borrower dies. That's neat. We do have a fantastic control deck in the works here, but how do we win? There's no point in being a control deck if we can't close out the game. We don't want to be that guy in a pod. So how are we going to finish it off? Since we have access to our graveyards and spells in our graveyards, I've included a small mill theme in the deck. Mesmeric Orb and spells like Tasha's Hideous Laughter, which we do get to cast twice, can make fast work of our opponents. Getting to cast a Maddening Cacophony twice would take three quarters of our opponent's libraries and make quick work of milling everyone out. We could also mill ourselves pretty easily too. With X cost drawing spells like Pull From Tomorrow, Blue Sun Zenith, or the new Drown in Dreams, we could be going through our whole libraries quickly. Winning with a Laboratory Maniac, Jace Wielder of Mysteries, or a Thassa's Oracle would make swift work of things. Being able to use the spell High Tide to up our mana production, flashing it back to double our double, would turn these X spells into lethal for one or more opponents without a doubt. But those methods of winning have been played out. I want to win with style. And we got a new creature with a win clause that I've been eager to try in Triska Decophile. These instant speed draw spells could be cast from the graveyard at the end of an opponent's turn with Triska Decophile out, so we can untap with the necessary 13 cards in hand to win the game. That's a flashy win that I really want to pull off. In the end, Lear ends up being a mono blue commander that leans into blue strengths, but not the usual blue pieces. You won't find traditional counter magic in Lear's list, and you won't find games with Lear being as grindy as you might imagine. Sure, your opponents may have trouble really putting a dent in you thanks to the versatility of all of our utility spells in the deck, but you do have the ability to win, and win fast in a deck like this. Check out my full list in the description below and be sure to let me know what you think. Have I done Mono Blue differently? Let me know if there are any cards you think I missed. And as always folks, good luck and have fun.